I would have liked to have his testicles involved much more into this transformation by using HCG. Hi folks, it's Uranus and in today's video I will go over the last part of Brandon Westfall's story on the episode of The Doctors about the 27-year-old man that hasn't reached puberty yet. If you haven't watched the first part, I compare Brandon's story to mine because I also didn't go through puberty before starting HRT at the age of 26 because of issues with my pituitary gland. So our stories have a lot of similarities. Now in this video, I will go over his MRI results. I will talk about the cause of his problems and my problems. And most importantly, I will go over the treatments that these doctors are going to prescribe to a 27 year old man that hasn't yet reached puberty. So let's, wa let's watch this video together. Let's look at the MRI here, Dr. Jabor, and highlight what you're looking at and some concerns you may have had when you saw this MRI. Thanks, Travis. Well, what we have here is a beautiful midline sagittal view of the brain, which looks normal, but we need to zone in on the pituitary to really look at the anatomy. When we um, magnify just the pituitary looking from the side, that's front and that's back, we see a normal pituitary uh, <clears throat> encasement, the shape of the pituitary, it's called the cella turcica and the hypothalamus are in a good position. And on the next image, when we look from the front. And for everyone watching right now, you may be looking at this image and thinking to yourselves, oh, that's just a small little part of the brain, but the pituitary dictates the production of so many hormones in the body, including sexual hormones. That's why the focus right now is pituitary gland and what may be going on there. So in this image, there were some things that, yeah. that looked interesting to you. So first of all, I don't think there's anyone watching this that actually thinks that the pituitary is just some small gland in the brain, a small part of the brain that is basically useless. Here again, I have to praise Brandon again for his participation in this show because in his place I would have never been able to do it. Four doctors talking about my brain with an audience behind them, I would have ran away. So Brandon, big pair of balls. So there, there's an asymmetric shape with this bright signal on this side, not seen on that side, but we do have a midline hypothalamic stalk. You're pointing here with this arrow because there's white over here that you're not seeing on the other yes. side. That's the asymmetry we're talking about. So Dr. Shannon, you're a skull base expert where the pituitary gland lives. When you're looking at this, what do you see concerning, not concerning? Fortunately, in this case, uh, in Brandon's case, and I congratulate you, uh, this is a benign lesion. I'll draw it. This is the normal pituitary gland here in yellow. This is the carotid artery here in pink. And there is a hockey stick lesion that you can see just between the two in blue. This hockey stick lesion is a benign overgrowth of the skull, the bone where the pituitary sits. So it is extrinsic to the... So my pituitary doesn't work uh, because it was damaged at birth. I was born at home and apparently there were a lot of complications. I was stuck with the uh, umbilical cord and they had to break my collarbone to pull me out. So the result of that is that apparently I lacked oxygen for quite some time and there's a part of my brain who just doesn't function properly. They didn't find any tumor or anything suspicious on the results of my MRI, but because of the problems at birth, it just doesn't work properly. Pituitary. I want to thank Dr. Jabour and Dr. Shahinian for helping us out. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, Dr. Spitz, a couple other things I want to look at, because we mentioned before, Brandon, you lack a sense of smell. Yeah. And this image from the MRI shows potentially why. That's correct. These bright areas right here, there should be the nerves for the sense of smell, and they're gone. it will be a darker signal there. And the nerves for the sense of smell when they form, they also bring along with them the nerves that stimulate the pituitary gland to release those key hormones for puberty and sexual development. And since those nerves for the sense of smell are gone, those nerves that control the pituitary are gone, and that's why Brandon has this syndrome. So testosterone helps us mature, but it doesn't help us get taller. In fact, 
So Brandon suffers from Kalman syndrome and he didn't go through puberty because there is a benign tumor on his pituitary gland. This was confirmed by an MRI scan. By the way, MRI scans are nothing like you see in the movies or in the series or in Dr. House, man. The one I was in felt smaller than a can of tuna and even with protective headphones it felt like a guy was drilling next to my ears for like 20 minutes. Also, to be able to have the necessary imagery of your brain, they inject you with some kind of contrast product, so you have to sit for like 20 minutes inside of a small tube like that without moving a muscle and it's not nice at all. His nerves of smell are gone and unfortunately his nerves that control his sexual organs are gone too. Unfortunately, he was undiagnosed until he was 27 years old. That's actually the biggest problem here. If he would have been diagnosed at 15 or at 16 years old, his quality of life would have been way better. The treatment here isn't necessarily the problem, it's the diagnosis that is the problem. Very often when you're a teenager, doctors, doctors will not diagnose this correctly or not even take it seriously. Brandon isn't the only case of Kalman syndrome that I've seen online and that waited years or even decades before having a proper diagnosis. The thing is, the condition is very embarrassing to talk about and especially if you've been bullied, it can take years before you actually do something about it. When I was 18, I went to, the fam to my family doctor with some of my symptoms and she just told me to stop playing video games and to go outside more. In fact, it stops the growth of the bones by closing the growth plates. But in Brandon's case, because his testosterone is so very low, these growth plates never closed. And, and everyone, see, look at this right here. You see where the bone is a little bit lighter through here? That is an open growth plate. The bone, it should be like the rest of the bone, that darker white. And, and because you see that growth plate, it means that literally his bones. He never had the signal from the testosterone to close it down. The other thing you can notice a little bit on here and also on a uh, bone density scan that he had is that the bones themselves are weak. Uh, and this is because testosterone is critical in bone strength and bone density. And as a result, Brandon has osteoporosis. This makes him more prone for easily breaking his bones. With testosterone, the bones can strengthen up. Not only does it close the growth plate, but it keeps the bones strong. And that's the silver lining is, Brandon, there is treatment. So Brandon's growth plates at 27 weren't fused yet because he lacked the proper hormones. He probably kept on growing well into his 20s, just like I did. I'm 1 meter 88. And I'm pretty sure if me or Brandon had started treatment much earlier, like at 16 or 17, we would never have reached the height that we're right now. Osteoporosis can really be a bitch because you can have random pains in your body, like I would have pain at night in my legs or in my arms. And I never really understood why before I did a density scan. So after one year of being on HRT, I did a density scan in a hospital and they told me I had the bones of a 70 year old. Let's now see what kind of treatment they prescribe Brandon. Thank you. You can be treated and you can go through your sexual maturation, go through puberty and get on with a more normal life. Awesome. What you need is that missing testosterone. And fortunately, it's very simple and straightforward to give that to you. Testosterone comes in a variety of uh, applications. It can be injected, there's pellets, and there's topical applications. This one's very easy to use. It's called Axeron, and okay. it's a pump bottle. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a squirt in that little cup, okay. you're gonna rub it on your underarm. You're gonna do it again and rub it on the other. And that's it. And that's it. Just a little squirt on the underarm left and a little squirt right, and that's it. It's just like magic. So I didn't start my hormonal replacement therapy with testosterone cream, but at some point during my journey I was also on cream. And in my opinion, it's really not the best form of treatment because it's really difficult to have stable levels. It's quite annoying to smear it on you in the morning. You have to be careful not to touch your partner or if you have kids or anything. It's much more expensive than testosterone injections and I had to order mine online and have it delivered from another country because the laws in my country changed and they would only sell cream that has like 1.8% of testosterone in it which was way too low for the price they were asking. This gel right here is 10%. It's 50 grams of cream and 5 grams of testosterone are in here. I don't think in Brandon's case using testosterone gel is ideal for a man at 27 that still needs to go through puberty. 
I would have liked to have his testicles involved much more into this transformation by using HCG. If you don't know HCG, HCG is uh, extracted from the urine of pregnant women and it actually mimics a hormone secreted by your pituitary, pituitary gland called luteinizing hormones. So it's actually sending the signals to your testicles to start producing testosterone. I was on HCG monotherapy for more than two years and I do believe it's a more natural process to go through puberty this way because it's your own balls producing the testosterone. So in my opinion, it's much more than just putting a little squirt on the left and a little squirt on the right. There are also many other things to take into consideration. Since his pituitary gland was damaged because of the benign tumor, I wonder if he has any other hormonal deficiencies. Because here in the video, they focus and they only talk about testosterone. Sure, testosterone is the hormone that will get you through puberty. But the pituitary is also responsible for other hormones that the sexual hormones for example your adrenal hormones like cortisol is super important your growth hormone your prolactin also your thyroid gland is being handled by your pituitary gland too now these are just examples this little gland in our brain is at the center of our hormonal health my pituitary doesn't work properly because of problems at birth and the signals being sent from my brain to my testicles never arrive so the guys down there they never did anything so no puberty i have never produced my own testosterone naturally now other than testosterone because of my pituitary problems i am also on thyroid hormones t4 and t3 i am on growth hormone and i have for some time been on cortisol replacement therapy because my adrenals produce too little cortisol but right now i'm not on that treatment anymore so it would actually be very interesting to see brandon's blood results i don't get why in this episode of the doctors they didn't talk about anything else than testosterone wow. once a day it's that easy now i know you live in a different part of the country <laughs> yeah. so i've made arrangements with a very good friend of mine who's a top level expert in testosterone replacement okay. and condition like yours, Dr. Ed Kim at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, and he's agreed to take you on and, and transition you and get you going, follow your testosterone levels, make sure that all the doses are right, and everything's gonna get turned on, okay? Good. You're <laughs> <laughs> ladies, <laughs> watch out, ladies! <laughs> Man, it, it's been a real pleasure having you on the show, and, and I hope the inspiration that you've provided people at home is if you have a medical problem and Brandon opened up discussing a problem he's dealt with his whole life and now there's a chance for a cure and for Brandon to live the kind of life you've been waiting to live and we, we, we look forward to updates, my friend. Thank Get you. It's okay. about time. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. Ladies, watch out. I don't know why, but just watching this last part made me feel uncomfortable, so I really can't imagine how Brandon was feeling. I don't understand why these doctors are talking to Brandon this way, you know, his body is underdeveloped, not his brain. And that's it. I wish there was more medical follow-up in this episode of The Doctors and less drama. Anyway, if you want to know more about Brandon's story, I think he's in his mid-30s now and he has finally been through puberty. I believe now he's on testosterone cipionate injections. He has a YouTube account with 14,000 subscribers and if you want, I put the link in the description. All right, that's it for today. If you want to know more about my personal transformation, I will put the videos of my transformation in the description. Let me know what you thought of the video in the comments. Subscribe if you like the content and thank you for watching. Uranus out.